Hello, I'm Kyung Dickerson with Small and Plevy, and today we're going to be discussing the difference between truth and proof in divorce cases. In a divorce, just like in any other court case, there's a big difference between truth and proof. You, it may be the absolute truth that your spouse is having an affair, but you still have to produce admissible evidence to prove it in court. People are very surprised when they hear this. They come to see me because they found emails or they found pictures on the home computer and they think that that's enough. They have telephone records showing phone calls, repeated phone calls at all hours of the night and they think that's enough. And I have to tell them it's not enough. It's not evidence of adultery. It's evidence of phone calls. It's evidence of emails, but it's not evidence of adultery. Adultery is specifically sexual intercourse with someone, not your spouse. They might clearly indicate that there is adultery, just like smoke indicates that there might be a fire. But again, it's not proof of the adultery itself. When it comes to court, you have to prove it. It's coming into court and saying, I know that she's committed adultery. I know that he's having an affair is not sufficient proof. How do you know? Were you in the room? Did you observe them in this act of adultery? To prove adultery is difficult. Even if both parties were to come into court and one person were, were to say he's having an affair and the other person were to say, yes, I'm having an affair, that's insufficient. You need an independent corroborating witness. It's not enough, for example, if you were to find an email saying I had a wonderful time having sex with you last night, that's not sufficient because people can fake that evidence. It's too easy for people to collude and fake, as it were, grounds for divorce. They don't want to wait the year separation for whatever reason. Somebody wants to get remarried, somebody wants to get divorced for tax reasons, someone's about to inherit a large sum of money and they don't want to argue over whether it's marital or separate. Somebody's company is about to go public and they don't want the other spouse to partake in the profits. For whatever reason, people have tried to commit fraud on the court, which is why we have these rules of evidence, which is why we have this level of proof that people have to meet before the court will grant them relief, like getting a divorce. First of all, a private investigator is an independent corroborating witness. A private investigator has no stake in the case. The private investigator has no reason to create fraudulent evidence. So to that extent, their testimony or their evidence is more reliable. Also, a private investigator would follow the couple, would leave markers, which most people don't do when they are following their spouse. They would come back and they would do a report. They would do a report with pictures, occasionally with video. And they could come to court to testify as an independent corroborating witness to, to substantiate those fault grounds for divorce. And adultery is relevant to a number of different things. For example, with regard to spousal support, when you're in negotiations, you can certainly stake a position and leverage that to a different or more advantageous allocation of assets. If the erring spouse is spending thousands of dollars to pursue this affair, is flying his paramour here and there buying her gifts, that's considered marital waste. The court can consider that when deciding how to divide the marital estate. To anyone who's, who suspects that their spouse is having an affair, decide first whether you want to know. And if you do want to know, don't go running up to your spouse and put them on their guard and ask them, are you having an affair? I know you're having an affair. That tirade, even though that might be your first instinct, take a step back, speak to an attorney, decide whether you want to obtain admissible evidence to prove the affair. I'm Kyung Dickerson. I'm with Small and Plevy. You can reach me at 703-790-1900 or through our webpage at www.smallandplevy.com.